Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ultimate Gamer Miami. We're going to continue on in loser's side with Captain Zack versus Antimatter Gaming's 8-Bit Man. Now, these two are very, very well-known reps for their characters. Of course, 8-Bit Man, one of the best robs both in Smash 4 and, of course, now Smash Ultimate. And Captain Zack, the Evo runner-up, playing either a Fabled Bayonetta or his Peach. He's playing both in this game, so we're going to see what happens. Yeah, this is, I feel like, going to be a counter pick war. I got those exact words from A-Bitman before uh, this tournament started. We're going to see a couple of mix-ups from characters to see who they start that really can define how this entire set goes. And now I'm seeing what appears to be the opening matchup in the back of the screen. We're seeing Daisy versus Rob. So, of course, you said this was a counter pick war. How do you feel this will fare for both players? that Brent was looking for, or 8-Bitman was looking for. This is the matchup that he wanted to see. He's more familiar with Rob in this game. Obviously a very strong Diddy in 4, but not as familiar with the character. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit interesting to see how this set progresses along. We're going to start on Pokemon Stadium. True neutral, baby. And now, well, of course, 8-Bitman is so good at using that micromanagement, using lasers and gyros in succession. But of course, Peach has her own turnips. And if you aren't aware, Peach's turnips do have an RNG factor to them. Every once in a while, maybe 1 in 100 or 300, if I can remember, she'll pull out either a stitch face or even a bomb. So if you pull enough turnips, it could prove deadly for the opponent. Yeah, it's the opposition of chaos versus control. Let's talk about the RNG of Peach, whereas everything with Rob is going to be timing based, whether it's charging the gyro, whether Ooh. it's the laser progression. It is so scary to see Rob charging that up smash. And we just saw the gyro. Peach bomber? It would negate the peach bomber. The hitbox in that thing is absolutely ridiculous. But that's the kind of thing you have to be aware about. Once again, trying to get that up smash off the gyro, but Zach barely avoiding it. This is going to be the scary part here. Peach and Daisy obviously so capable of building up massive amounts of percent on the big body that is Rob. But look right now, it's going to be very Ooh, close to Grounded move here. and the up air will hit off 8 Man taking the first stock. Of course, an ultimate is very, very difficult to get out of grounded moves. Rob's down throw, King K rules down throws, and a number of other moves cause that grounding to be automatic. So it's a very smart option, especially at kill percents for a lot of characters. Yeah, the beauty of this game is that at the higher percents, it's going to take a little bit longer, but you're actually able to buffer it during the initial animation. So that was just a good call out on 8 Bitman's part, knowing when to use that up air. And a Nair trade will net Captain Zack the, the first stock in this set, and now it's back to even both players at low percent. Notice that they're both and projectiles right underneath that first side platform. We see that initial down tilt from Zach. That's going to be a big combo opener. We're going to see it right here as well. If he's able to net those initial percents, you can easily see Rob take 50, 60 damage so quickly. It is true. Now, but now note, both of these characters do have a reflector move. Rob with his side B and Peach with a Toad. So we're going to see if both players want to use these, but they have to call out exactly when the move's going to happen. Indeed. Obviously, there's clear risk. And right now, 8 Man trying to go to the ledge. Another gyro and turnip coming from Zach as he adds ed pre edge pressure and the up smash, beautiful read from Zach in center stage, and all of a sudden, the game is back in his control. Killing Robin, actually only 100% too, and he's a early, heavy, yeah, early he's a stock. Very heavy character, it speaks at just how strong. He just up smashes a downer to the forward air. Will this match end already? Look at where he even percents already. So much damage coming out of Daisy so quickly. The crowd coming alive for Zach. Apeman Man going for a down smash, a down throw from Toad, getting involved once again, and now Zach ready to whiff. His kill options, 8 Man snaps back to the ledge. Will it be enough? A back air, he's at 124, misses a laser, comes back to the top, a turnip! Can he make it back? This is where things get so difficult for the big body characters. Peach is able to cover so many options Ooh. so quickly against ledge. And it's gonna be a m miraculous comeback if 8 Man manages! Oh, no! But the turnip spike underneath Pokemon Stadium. Of course, this stage does have one of those strange ledges where there is a ceiling halfway through the ledge. And I'm just... <laughs> I think the crowd is coming alive. They really, really want their homeboys to win. But of course, only, yes, I'm aware, only one can go forward in this setting. What do you think about counter picks? Where should 8 Man take Zach in this case. I feel like lower ceilings are definitely going to help him. I'm really curious to see the platform layout to see which players are most comfortable with the, the others. We're going to have a lot of interesting options in Ultimate. We have a lot more stages available to us, obviously. So seeing where they go from this, we're going to stick with the same characters, I believe. You see how I oh, see 8-Bitman donning the headphones now. Now, do you think 8-Bitman will opt to switch characters here? He's going to run it back with Rob. So I was actually talking with him about, about this before the event started. He's pretty much only gone Rob so far in Ultimate. Diddy has been a very deep pocket for him rather than a secondary character like we saw in Ultimate. I have heard so many Diddy Kong players say the character does have such big fundamental differences between now and the game. And now, of course, running it back to Pokemon Stadium 2. 
It's a cure run back, same characters, different day. You see the double jab there, trying to get a little bit of progression Ooh. started. I love that drag down that Peach is able to do. A lot of characters have those multi-hit up airs or even back airs that drag down the characters and do these loops, which are devastating high percent combos, especially on heavy characters with a huge hitbox like Rob. It's really interesting looking at this matchup specifically, though. Both these characters are still fairly similar to their Smash 4 iterations. They just benefit so much from the new mechanic from this game. Being able to tilt out of dash, obviously going to be really helpful to Peach at low percent. You can see the grab here. Ooh, Not perfect. able to connect with the up air. Perfect air dodge from Zack. He missed both opportunities. And like you were saying, the mechanics of this game compared to Smash 4 only only one air dodge basically at a time in the air allows for much better juggling. And now Peach, considered by many to be a top tier character, we see Zach taking full advantage of this. Back to the ledge, 8 Man tries to recover center stage, and a forward air will take the first dock for Zach that with unrelentless that, offensive. That missed tech spelled doom for 8 Man. Okay, the laser does hit, but it's not a strong one. Charging the gyro on stage, trying to go for a spike. And right now we see, of course, Ape Man using Rob's incredible finishers. But you have to land those. You got to make sure you get that read on there. Air dodge from Zach. Risky goes low, but that parasol actually negated all of Rob's active hitbox for that downer. Yeah, the more things change, the more things stay the same for Peach. That parasol hitbox is gigantic, just as it was in Smash 4. Okay, throwing the gyro down, going for a bit of a double dribble. And now the up throw that will kill one of the best in the game. Eight South Florida coming alive for 8-Bit Man. And now he's just using that up B, almost flexing a little bit. They're That's both respecting all of each other's spacing right here. We talk about changes in this game. Shields are something that have gotten generally weaker compared to from 4. Right. And obviously the bigger characters are going to have a much harder time, especially against a character like Peach with those multi-hit dares. Really hard for Rob to just sit and shield. There is some similarity in these characters and how long they're able to stay in the air and use such high priority aerials. We use Gyro right now, so sort of insurance for him to get back onto the stage. Now 8-Bit Man with his own opportunity for an edge gun. The side B will not kill just yet, but it is one of the best finishers. He went for the double down, and now he's getting edge guarded. Can he come back to the stage, or is Zach going to find it with the Peach Bomber? Missed a down air. Both high percents, they're going for all super Omega hard reads, but Zach still... <laughs> Still not killing with the back air. He's waiting one more second. Both players over 100%. The Dyro comes out, the up air will kill, and Zach takes the lead. We finally saw a Bitman have a moment to commit himself to an advantage state. Was able to close that out. We'll see him start these okay. early combos too All here. Right. 32, Hold 39, 39, 45. We're counting up here. It's Count Chocula. He's waiting for it. And the up smash. What a beautiful conversion from 8-Bit Man. If that's not adaptation, I don't know what is. The fastest zero to death, blink and you miss it. 8-Bit Man, dominant finish the game too. Great play from both players. I have a feeling this set will go down to the wire. This will be a game five set from what I'm seeing so far. And now the question is, do we switch characters? Do we switch stages or do we do both? Yeah, both players very contemplative now. Neither really showing too much emotion, just deep in thought about the next move. This is going to be a chess match if of any set we might see today. Lilac going to be the stage. We'll see yeah. the characters up next. And let me ask the crowd really quick. Who are you guys cheering for? If you like 8-Bitman, make some noise. <laughs> and if you're here for Zach, let me hear it. <laughs> Obviously, the hometown favorite, 8-Bitman, going to be the crowd. Yeah. Easier today. And we see the Bayo switch. This could be big for Captain Zach. Captain Zach, of course, coming all the way from Louisiana, whereas 8-Bitman right here in his hometown. Coral Springs, baby, just around the corner. Okay, we have the, the, the patented Bayonetta from Captain Zach. And of course, a lot of people were doubting Bayo's ability in this game, but I believe that didn't 8 Man say he thought Bayo was top, at least top 20 in this I was game? I've got to say, if, if anyone's going to not doubt the power of Bayo, it's going to be 8 Man. He absolutely despises this matchup. This is where you're going to see the counter plays and the counter picks start to really take place. If he loses this match, I would expect a character switch. Look, I'm not saying Bayonetta can get rested by Puff at 45%, but I am saying that against a target like Rob, such a big body, I can see why this is painful. And Here all of a sudden, go. oh, okay. If that was a different game, which I'm not going to mention, he might have died. But here, you have to work a little harder. And oh. the down B tried to go for that witch time, but missed it. Down air. OK, and of course, Captain Zach went to Lilat Cruise. This stage is the only stage on our roster that actually fully tilts. But when you use a character like Bayonetta, who has those bullets, those do not tilt. In other words, you can use that to get a kill. And the air dodge it wasn't enough. And he actually answers back with his own up smash. He's one going of, in this. One of the many, many changes that happened to Bayonetta, both bats within and witch time, incredibly nerfed from the previous Oh, game. OK, not, the upper is not quite going to do it. But he air dodges down, a risky recovery. But he decks it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh he my. Spike. Is he dead? Whoa. 
He's Did gonna continue this all stage pressure though. I actually thought that that was gonna be a quick 2-0 lead for Zach or for Ape Man, but Zach very cleverly using that other part of the up airs to get back to the stage. A Bitman said earlier he was worried about the power of Bayonetta against Rob, but currently sitting at 190%. This is uh, quite the high percent for Rob right now. I think if Bayonetta even taunts him, he'll die <laughs> at this point. You see him going for the grab. This is where things get difficult. Bayonetta obviously going to struggle to kill these higher percents. We saw him go for the forward throw. Going to be the back throw of the up air potentially at this point. Right. But he's just commit committed to just using those bullets. Just forward throw will kill, yeah. Bayonetta still has a strong forward throw, as we saw from Smash 4. And now this is where she seems to strive at these low percents getting kills. Okay, nice and there into oh. two uppers. Okay, wait. He I has to go back to stage to refresh resources. Yeah. But you're going to be able to get so much damage. Oh! Off Okay, that wasn't quite at the high percent, but we've seen that kill so many times in the bubble. Bayonetta's fixed knockback on those forward airs is so deadly. But look at that, just like that, Zach actually taking Ooh, the lead now. Great tech right there. He did the falling near to try to catch him off guard, but 8 Man was well aware. Now snap back to the ledge. Both players are just launching such high octane moves in this game, which timing the gyro, but it's not enough. And now we're gonna see, will 8 Man take advantage of this 112%? Gonna use the laser off the ledge there. And one of the big changes also from four into ultimate. Bayo not gonna be able to oh my. immediately with that upbeat. He's fighting these up smashes from the depths of hell. I cannot understand how he finds these. Taking a one stock lead here, but still at 139. And no tech right there. It is a one stock game. Game three. Who will take the lead in this set? We see Zach with the immediate parry. We've seen these early recent combos. I feel like this situation favors Zach at the moment. Okay, great up air chains, came in 36. Getting back to the ledge to safety. Okay, laser coming out there, be very, very careful. Oh, he's going off stage, wait a minute. The air dodge. The up E off stage, so strong for Bayonetta. Now he's starting game. his own set of combos, going into a forward air. We see Bitman able to get to stage though. That ability to reset to neutral, so strong for Rob in this matchup. This could oh, be Oh, will that be it? Oh my gosh. Too heavy. Too heavy. He was like 2% away and hold on, they're both going for high arts moves off the stage. What happened? What just happened? The dare, the dare finisher there from Captain Zack. He got back wow. to stage first and knew he could land on stage safely with it. Such great awareness from Captain Zack now taking the set lead right there. That was a very, very risky situation. I know both of these characters can do so well in terms of offstage play. Bayonetta, which puts what seems like infinite jumps, and Rob with a very, very long lasting up B recovery. Yeah, these two characters do not mind fighting offstage in the slightest. You see, a Bitman now contemplating where he's going to take Zach. I do not expect a run back to Lila. I definitely don't expect a character switch. I really do think Ape Man is actually under well control of this match. He actually had the lead for a few of those, but then sort of tried to close it out a few times. That's the thing with Smash. You can get so desperate for the kill, but for every single time you whiff the kill, it's one more opportunity for your opponent for your opponent to come right back to you. You never want to seed new, uh, seed advantage to your opponent. You talked about the best here. How you, once you go for those high high hard reads, you allow your opponent to have so much time to get those combos. And if any character is going to benefit from those initial openings, it's going to be Bayonetta. Going into this game four. Wait a back minute. To Lilac. Now I'm surprised. I'm actually shocked here. This is a huge gamble right now from 8-Bit Man, but he's opening up very, very quickly right here. We've seen this matchup, I don't know how many times in the in Smash 4, but in this game, not as often. But here yeah. we're getting a nice run back, a nice trip down memory lane. Yeah, the early percent combos here from Diddy are gonna be a little bit different from 4, but still a similar damage output. The problem is gonna be when you get to higher percents. Diddy yep. is going to struggle to kill outside of initial, some initial down tilt into F-Smash confirms, or banana into F-Smash as well. Right. And of course, Diddy Kong can only pull out one banana at a time, but the opponent can use it as well. So if you are going to throw it, make sure you don't miss. Oh, we see the monkey flip off stage. Dangerous, but he's able to land that back air. A couple of questionable monkey flips now. All right. And so many of these now attacking on percent very, very easily. But it's fine the kill, which seems to be the problem, but not for 8-Bit Man. Getting the up smash, now taking first stock. It looks like this pick was his favor of which time? What the punish? An up smash also from Zach. He said right back at you. Now it's 2-2 two -two apiece. Now he has the bay uh, he has the banana in hand. One of the different changes from four to ultimate is it's not gonna be a two throw limit anymore. It's got its own separate timer. We'll see how well he's able to use that to his advantage. Now both characters taking advantage of their huge hitbox on the aerials. Banana clap, but nothing after that. We've seen Dakbo pull off some banana infinite so far. I've it seen them. Those are nuts. Not familiar with them, so we're not going to see that. Unfortunately, this matchup a huge advantage if he's able to pull that though. Hey man, you never know. Sometimes in the lab, even the night before, they can learn those. And now Zach using this, the stage's tilt to use those bullets as an approach. 
We see even this, percent, even stock count. We see the smaller initial hitboxes of the up B. He was actually able to spot dodge that pretty quickly, whereas in four, Bayo's up B would clip uh, Diddy there. So those bullets are 35 percent and counting. Can he get in right here? What's the option? Remember, this is 8-Bit Man's potential last two stocks in this tournament. Yeah. Yes, make something happen here. It's going to be really interesting to see how he uses this stage. Obviously, Lilac with the lower platforms able to clip a lot with the up, Diddy up smash. So it's something he'll be keeping an eye on for sure. But, I mean, just Zach's ability to commit to those bullets so safely. I mean, it's a great option. It's such a good option in this specific layout. Okay, let's see. An up throw into the up air. A little hoo-ha for you. But now Bayonetta grabbing the banana. Of course, if, 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 if Ape Man's not careful, you can get witch time off banana too. I feel like both these can Ooh, down again. air! Once again, the down air. And now Ape Bit Man on his last potential tournament stock. Will he have it in him? Does he have the juice? Tried or is he thirsting right now? Tried to get that read with the down smash and close that out early. Zach going to be able to dodge that and now get these early combos. Already 41. Ooh! Up <laughs> smash out of shield. Raw forward smash going through the shield. I don't think Zach expected that. I know I sure as hell didn't. And now it's last stock right here. 41% for 8 man and counting. Whereas Zach using his cup, his patented aerial strings, and of course, retreating right back to bullet time. He's saying, if you want to win this game, you got to approach me somehow. And this is the struggle. When 8 Bitman had the corner pressure like that, he had an opportunity to add on a lot. Ooh, more. banana snipe, down smash. What a great aerial aiming right now from 8 Bitman. The banana went perfectly diagonally towards the, the bullets that were coming here while he was receding. Up throw to back air, to a banana clip. Hold on, the strings are out here. They're both whiffing. <laughs> Crowd getting into oh. it, investing it with karaoke time as we try to see who wills themselves to victory here in game four. We're going to see right here, falling Nair, but 8-Bit Man getting the grab. Now Zach at 98%, I believe is that up smash kill percent, the witch time! Oh, the banana! On. He misses! Oh, once again! They're both dancing on the platform, the up air comes out! This will this be it? He misses the up air once again! They're both at kill percent! Ape Man needs to stay alive here. Old oh, Zach take it and proceed to top five in the bracket. He charges a smash but misses. Grabs banana, misses it on the shield. Up smash, he has the eyes out of this. This is so close. Oh, the roll. Both players getting really, really antsy here. He's, oh man. I mean, Zach just reverting back to the corner, taking a second to compose himself, thinking how he wants to finish. Oh, I no. There's no way. This is basically at this point RNG. I can't believe. Oh, one forward throw kill. It won't do it. We the see him go high charge. with the up B. He's going to oh. try to cover it. But oh, 8-Bit gets the stage. Oh! Pass down B's at the left. Oh, no. The quarter circle forward cost yeah. Zach the match. We've seen that many times. Bayonetta players. It's a tiny little misinput, which caused the recovery to whiff. And now, as I predicted, we have a game five. Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen. This is our first game five of top eight. First game five. First, hopefully, of many. It's what I love to see. <laughs> Holy spit, I agree, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Where are we going game five? I mean, obviously, Lila Cruz barely was supposed to be where Zach had his comfort zone in, and I'm, I'm sure he's gonna go right back to it, but he has to be careful with those recoveries. I'm curious if Apeman's actually gonna take it away from him, though. They both won one on the on one, one on the stage, but it seems maybe like takes away that stage advantage. And don't forget that the prize pot for this top eight is $15,000. So I think even getting third place gets you over $1,000. So it's, it's stacks on stacks for this event, which is a really, really cool thing to see. And of course, 8 Man needs to pick this next decision very, very carefully if he wants to stay in the money. Yeah, this is where things get difficult. Zach looking very comfortable with both Peach and Bayo. And the onus is on 8 Man. He has to pick his character first. Zach gets character advantage now. Okay. You see the Rob selection, Zach taking his time thinking about it, whether it sips on the water. Will we see Bayo? Will we see Peach? Well, I, I think Zach, with, with the up smash reads that he had. And a Bayo. Oh, we're going right back. This is it. This is the all or nothing right here. Bayonetta, Lilac Cruz. Will it be enough? Oh, sorry, not Lilac Cruz. We are going to town and city. A bit of a mix up. And let's get alive for game five. Captain Zach versus 8 Man. One of the big changes, Town and City, now a much taller ceiling. Sides remain the same, so we're going to see some offside kills pretty quickly. Great 73% strength to open up the match. You need to be really careful in this stage, though. One back air from Rob. If you miss DI, you will be dead. Oh, yeah, you're out of here. Of course, Bayo being incredibly light. Or that side, side B. B so I, strong as I, well. I'm calling it right now. Side B will probably be responsible for at least two kills this game. All right, the up throw started off. 
trying to land on the moving, pl moving platform. Gyro getting involved. Bit of a ledge trap option there. Going for this first side B, but it's not quite hitting. And those light lasers recharge after about two and a half seconds. They come back so quickly and cover so much ground. They come back real quick. The up air to recover. Sometimes the best recovery is offensive. And Zach taking advantage of the state's blast zone with a first back air. You called the back air, but from the wrong character, Zach going to take that first off the bat. Wait a minute. Up throw. Great air dodge from Captain Zach. Perfectly avoiding that up air, which would have definitely killed on this stage. But hold on. Can he get away from this down air? He does. Back onto the stage at 120, trying to clip him off the shield with that up air, but it's not enough. Oh, get the gyro coverage there. The laser as well. How's the recovery? Do we have an American sniper here or not? The down throw into the up air. That will kill. It is dead even this game five. They both are playing perfectly. They're not going for anything too high risk. They know what kills. They know what doesn't kill. Oh, wait. Great tech. Another one. That That's actually where things been... get so dangerous for Rob. Such an easy character to combo for Bayonetta. All right. Once again, going for the up on the shield. But it looks like 8 Man is aware of that. Zach might need to use a different approach here. Okay. Narrowing onto the shield once again. Good gyro usage from Z from 8-Bit Man. This is so important. This oh. is the first time we've really seen Wow! It. Wow, wow. That that was actually so almost amazing. Down air into that up witch twist. The first time we've really seen a lot of gyro play being able to use from Rob. A lot of the time, Captain Zach's been able to stuff out a lot yeah. of those options. And that gyro just has so much priority. We'll see what he can do here. Bullets once again coming out, but there's no tilt on this stage. And it looks like Ape Man himself is not getting tilted either. He's happy to stay on the ground. Up there won't quite kill, but one more will. 119 for Zach. Snapping back, back to the lead. The back here will kill it. And now we have a last stock situation for Zach. And that's what we were talking about earlier in the set. The fact that that up B now pokes above ledge. Ape Man was able to take advantage of that and close out that stock. Now only 83-2. It's going to be really difficult for Zach to be able to get this stock if a Bitman stays in center stage. Wow, six down airs in a row, or down tilts in a row from Zach, or from a Bitman. And now we're going to see if he can close out this next stock. Using the gyro to his advantage, almost getting that witch twist. Those up B combos are just right. gone. And of course, both players will be very, very careful here. Thought he was going to be able to get the witch time there. Only got the bats within. Much Zach and that's gets the up, or a Bitman gets the up smash there to close out the game. Quick handshake between players, but the crowd obviously incredibly happy to see their hometown boys.